to George and his folks, the unsung heroes, making everything look transparent and easy. Thank you for being behind the scenes for all the technology. Um, my aim uh, in the next 15 to 20 minutes is to give you an experience. So I'm going to talk less about the researchy type of stuff and more about the end product and what we created. And so this is about building the coaching alliance and strengthening executive leader development really via the six latitudes of listening. Next slide, please. So whether you're in person or virtual on Teams, would you just please, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate yourself as a listener? Just go ahead and write that number down in your notes or your reflective book, as the last presenters talked about. And if you're uh, on Teams, if you're so bold enough, go ahead and put your number in chat. We're not gonna ask you to defend that number or define it. We just kinda wanna know what the starting base is. I'm looking around, all the shiny, happy faces looking back at me, giving me an indication that you're done. And I see a lot of numbers coming in, seven, eights. Thank you. So a little bit of the, the background. Um, participants from five coaching programs um, often commented on the struggles as a student coach, their emergence of becoming from a student into the student coach, and then ultimately to a professional certified coach. The growth edges that they frequently mention involve mindfully entering into the coaching space, presencing, overcoming imposter phenomenon, listening and confusion between mentoring, consulting and coaching. Further informal discussions with these participants and analysis of end of course surveys, the end was about 1937, really helped answer this primary question. How can we meet students and emerging coaches where they are at in their coaching journey? From that question and the data we gathered and their findings, we really developed um, 10 models. I'm presenting one of them today called the six latitudes of listening. Next slide. Okay, I'm going to do an audible. I know it says here pair up, but in the interest of time and also to connect what Abigail, Heather and Alinda offered, I'm going to invite you to do a reflective practice right now. So just on your own notes, I'm going to have you answer this question. If you had to uh, have a discussion with someone else on the most challenging thing in your life right now, how might that go? So if you're going to have a discussion with someone about the most challenging part of your life right now, how might that go? This is an open and reflective practice. will take about 90 seconds. We're going to ask that you just write that down. And if you're on Teams and if you want to share so boldly into uh, the chat, please feel free to do so. Great, thank you. I'm going to model the behavior I'm asking of you. In a moment, I'm asking at least one or two of you inside the room to share out loud what you've written down. So to model that first, I wrote down um, making sense of my past, um, how, I'm, how I, will I connect with my own goals, and what am I missing or what could be? So those are some of the notes that I wrote down. Would anyone else in here like to share some of the thoughts that they wrote down. Okay, the uh, the issue is uh, basically closing my uh, mother-in-law's house after her passing with six sisters or six daughters in that family. They lived in that house for 50 years. Thank you for sharing that. Another voice? Okay, that's I'll, like, I'll air ahead. my laundry. So Go mine ahead, is uh, balancing the challenge of sandwich parenting with ailing parents and uh, beginning my transition from the Army. Thank you. Appreciate that. Next slide, please. So what we've just demonstrated is um, actually listening to yourself in a reflective practice as opposed to listening to someone else. That's the, what we were going to do. So here are the six latitudes of listening. Um, this is borrowed really based upon what ICF defines as listening, what a guy named Otto Schirmer talks about the different listening levels, as well as a guy named Wesson who does a lot of stuff on coaching and mentoring. So it's sort of behind the scenes there. The six latitudes of listening contain six levels of listening that constitute a bridging of chronos. Think chronological time, the time we can measure on a clock. Kairos, the depth of time. If you've ever been lost in a conversation with someone, you have a chiretic moment. You get to feel something around the depth of that. 
anarchy, which is um, sort of a term of a hard care or hard love, and then the head and the heart. So here are the, the levels. <clears throat> and we often spend time in listening to confirm. Someone is talking with us. And we're making assumptions. We're judging. We're solving. I, I know I'm not the only one, but sometimes in my relationships, someone is telling me their problems. And I'm thinking, well, if you just did this, you would solve it. That doesn't work really well sometimes. Listening to understand, active listening. That might be practicing the seven skills of listening where you're um, summarizing or you're echoing the words that they use. You're asking for clarification. And it's about what is said to understand. Listening to reflect. This is about appreciation and reflective inquiry. Really attention to the nonverbals come into play here. Listening for connection. That's about resonance and trust and emotion. Have you ever had a conversation with someone you go, man, there's something about that I'm just resonating with. You're feeling that reverb, not just what's being said, but maybe the song beneath the words. And then listening for curiosity, that's true wonderment and openness. Listening holistically is energies and deeper meta. Next slide. And this is a beautiful side, putting all those together. <clears throat> I'm going to start on the left and work my way to the right. The top listening levels, listening to confirm, understand, and reflect, really touch on the past, what was. The more me-focused. The present, what is and how. And sometimes the more they focus, it's not just me, but it's this other person in this journey with me. And as you begin to get below the line, below the surface, as we might call it, you begin to listen for connection, curiosity, holistically, and that's about the future. That's about what could be, and maybe even the unspoken, what's not being said in that moment. And then you begin to form the Us Alliance. At least that's what we've seen in coaching. You'll see in the far right then, the head, the heart, and then as you move to the lower levels, the deeper levels, you have head, heart, and hand all together, and that's really represented in the globe. That's a holistically. Next slide. We're going to do this invitation to have a conversation. I'm going to have you go back to your same notes. And I want you to just now, using the different listening levels, first I want you to just consider the answer to how to best care for your aging parents or other loved ones. So you're just going to listen to what you're saying in response to this invitation. How to best care for your aging parents or loved ones. And then I'm going to have you go to the next slide, please. And as you're listening to what you need to do or should do about caring for your aging parents or loved ones, what listening levels are now being activated? Is it more about the past, present, or future? Is it me, they, or us? Is it listening to confirm, understand, reflect, or the deeper listening latitudes of connection, curiosity, and holistically? Again, we'll take about 90 minutes. We cue the lights so you'd have a nice reflective experience. <laughs> about 90 seconds and we'll come back and then uh, continue. Um, thank you for your work. Uh, I'm gonna share some of my thoughts. Um, I used to be the primary caregiver for my 98 year old aunt when I started a PhD program. Um, was glad to take care of her, but it, it, it uh, it just made me a better human. And, and I now often think about um, aging friends of the family that maybe don't have anyone else, kids or siblings to help take care of them. So I'm wondering um, how can we actually do something now that extends that relationship, although they may have, they will pass at some point. Maybe it's some type of video interaction where we ask them to share their history of their life. That's kind of what I'm sitting with now. I'd invite um, one or two folks in the room just to share what they're thinking about in terms of uh, the reflective practice that we just did. I guess I'll go. Um, one thing, my, my parents love to travel. And so how, how do you balance that with, with that, that desire to get out there and see things and, and live life and uh, experience versus collecting things, collecting experiences when, when they're making that transition to perhaps needing more, more support, uh, and more assistance in getting through. Thank you, Joe. That actually connects to the time I had to tell my aunt at 97, she couldn't drive anymore, but the deal was I bought her car so she could still feel like she owned it, but she couldn't drive anymore at that age. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, and then Maurice, I think you had your hand up, sir. Yes, I did. Thanks, John. Um, 
so I kind of find myself in all three spaces, past, present, and future on this one. Uh, past thinking about what my parents went through when they both were in the final stages of their, their life and some of the, the choices that they made earlier on in their lives that led to uh, how they lived the, the, their final years of their lives, um, which brings me to the present, right, in thinking about what I need to do to maybe experience my latter years um, differently than, than they did. Um, and then more importantly, maybe, maybe not, uh, at least to my children, uh, in the future, how I make decisions about things will impact how they have to clean up after me when my time comes, right? So those are all parts of the, the conversation. Um, and so empathizing with, with others who are going through it um, and then also uh, reflecting on others who will go through it in the future. Thank you. Um, I want to connect what we just observed for, for me, to connect to, to what the previous presenters talked about. The power of, of reflection and reflective practices is really you gain insight and self-awareness. So if you go to the next slide, please. I'm wondering now on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate yourself as a listener? Ideally, whatever number you started with, if it increased by one, we've done our duty today and our due diligence. So I'm wondering where you will, uh, where this skill will next show up in your life. Not something to be answer now, but it's something as we move now into the Q&A. Next slide. This is my contact information. If you'd like more about this research, I'd be happy to send it to you. Thanks for participating and going on the journey with us.